Thanks for joining us for this episode of Coffee with Closers, where business leaders share insights on how to build businesses from the ground up and best practices for innovating in their industry. Hi, Jessica. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Sam. Very excited to have you. So for the audience that don't know about you, can you tell them a little bit about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. My name is Jessica Goldman, and I founded All About Dance in 2005. And we have been teaching the Chicagoland area to dance in every single genre you can imagine, from ballet, tap, jazz, modern, all the way to social dance. And we start at one year old and we go all the way up till adults, so the sky's the limit. Um, and we've just been having fun. You have an interesting story. You are not from originally from Chicago. You came to Chicago for a particular reason. You want to tell us I a little did, bit about that? I did. I did. So I've always stuck in the Midwest. I must love this like chilly weather. Um, but I grew up in Wisconsin, dancing competitively through high school. And then I went to University of Minnesota and I danced on their nationally ranked dance team. Then I went on to be a Vikings cheerleader. And I had this amazing boyfriend who got into law school in Chicago and he asked me to come and move with him. So I said, yes, I'll do it. Um, and with that being a stipulation that I made the Chicago Bulls dance team. And I did, mm -hmm. I became a lovable. So I moved down to Chicago and being in Chicago made me really realize there was a need for a dance studio that offered a really fun outlet for people in ways in which um, I wasn't finding. So I was dancing for the Bulls and I also was dancing all around the city. And I just felt like there was a missing fun community um, where it really fostered like the love of dance and where everybody could just come and rock it out. Um, because I felt that in order to get kids to fall in love with dance, you need to infect them with the fun first. And adults as well. Um, we have a huge adult program, which we built being you know on the premise that when you go to college and you go get a professional career, a lot of women and men can't pursue dancing anymore and they still have to get their work out in. So we created a program where people could come in, rock it out, learn a significant dance routine, but also still get that cardio workout. So long story short, I, um, I'm very happy that I moved to Chicago when I did. And we've been rocking it out for 15 years now. Awesome, so like you just brought it up, 15 years. So you must have learned a lot running a business yes. for the last 15 years. So yes, I have. Share us a little bit about some of the things you've had to learn in you know, the hard way. <laughs> the hard way. Well, I was 24 when I opened the studio. And um, I would say, you know, being naive is kind of blissful. <laughs> now, I, I don't know if I would do it all over again now that I know what I know. Mm -hmm. um, I actually would because all the pain is worth it. All those little bumps in the road, <laughs> is, it's definitely worth, um, worth all of it. But I... I would say that one thing that is, stands out to me that I did not realize how important the front of the house was. So, you know, being a dance studio, the talent, you're always looking for talent. You're looking for professional dance teachers that still have that, you know, positive energy and that are still good role models. And I was investing a lot of time into that. And, you know, then I was like, okay, what high school kid can, you know, sit at the front desk or um, do I have a mom that would want to sit there? And I didn't realize like how much it really meant to have that person be a customer service driven person that really could take a parent complaint or, you know, feed somebody a smile when they needed it or anything like that. So we really invest a lot of time and energy now into our front, front of the house. And they're just as important as the people teaching the kids and adults to dance. So essentially, what, one of the lessons you've learned is the customer service aspect of it. Yes, customer service is huge. You have to have a quality product, but you really want to give customers a great experience from the second they walk into the door to the second they leave. Most certainly, because most businesses, they do a great job is trying to get customers in. Right. And then after they've acquired them, they do a poor job of servicing them. Absolutely. And then they walk away with a pretty bad experience, and then that's not really what you want. Absolutely. Retain your good clients and treat them well. I always tell all my employees, the more you treat your clients like family, the better off it's going to be. You know, treat people like you want to be treated. Most certainly. Yeah. And obviously, you know, part of building a business is how to figure out figure out how to grow, right? And yes. generating new business and kind of maintaining that. Yeah. You have some expansion plans in the horizon. <laughs> we can talk about talk a little bit about that. Yeah. But part of the you know the customer acquisition effort, you talked to me a little bit about some of the proactive things that you do uh, to generate new new business. Uh, how we generate new business? Yeah. Well, we do a lot of performances around the city, so mm -hmm. we really try to maintain. Uh, a staple in the community and you know our community is what I think people are really attracted to and we continue to um, do so much to 
uh, build that community. And I think from that, the word of mouth is what really spreads. Um, I'm a mom and I like to talk about good things that my kids do. And I think that I'm like many other moms in the Lincoln Park Old Town area and Chicago in general. So word of mouth has really been our best marketing tool. Makes sense. Yeah, and beginning. as far as like in, ensuring some of the other initiatives that you, you do to make sure that you're staying in front of, you know, your prospective customers, staying yeah. relevant, what other things are you doing proactively? Um, to stay relevant with our customers, mm -hmm. we're just being the best that we can be. And I think that our name recognition now really serves itself. We've always stuck by our, our core values and our customers know that, you know, we've never swayed from who we are. We know who we are and we're not afraid to continue being who we are. We always stay ahead of the market and we're always employing dance teachers that are so fresh in the community that are teaching the best styles and the best technique along with you know our roots which is really love and friendship and community and passion and all of that so so you mentioned you're a mom and i know you're a mom yes. of two and i've known you probably just over a year now yeah. and i always knew you very very energetic <laughs> So tell me what the secret behind how you stay very energetic uh, and positive. The secret, I would say, this isn't going to make sense to most people, but it's called the Swiggum Gene. Um, that's my maiden name. And my family is, is full of energy. They are really the, the people that drive that. And I think that I was blessed with the sunshine gene. Um, you know, I love what I do. And I've loved what I have done since I was a kid. And dance is my passion and my soul. And I love my family and my kids but dance really drives me every single day. And I do believe that as a mom, you have to keep something in your life that still makes you feel young again as well. So, um, you know, get on the dance floor and it'll infect you with some positive energy and see what it does for you. Samuel. Let's get you on that dance <laughs> I'm not floor. Sure about that. <laughs> so I know you, you have some expansion in the horizon. You're starting to open up some multiple locations. So talk yes. to me, where did that idea come from and, and what are some of the things you're proactively doing to, to expand? Yes, well, I'm a firm believer that if you don't grow, you'll die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and with that comes a lot of growing pains, which, you know, you have to learn to, to be able to handle. But we started in a studio that was 1,800 square feet. So it was very two little tiny studios. We had very, very little lobby, um, one bathroom, which was in a studio. So it's pretty hilarious that we ran a business for five years like that. Um, I'm lucky enough that now my husband is in real estate and you really helped drive our expansion to our next location. Um, now we have 15,000 square feet. And when we moved to that location, I brought on my amazing partner, Shannon Westphere, who really helped grow the studio. Um, she's fundamentally the brains behind the business. She's really helped with infrastructure and um, train people correctly so that we can grow. Now we have, we started with five employees. Now we have 45 employees. Um, so we've always continued to be focused on growth. One, because we have amazing people that work for us and we wanna to continue to be able to fulfill their careers and their dreams. Um, and you know, we just, we have a great brand. So we, we want to take our amazing infectious dance excitement and, and let everybody in the world feel it. Mm -hmm. So we are looking to expand in Chicago up by the Ravenswood area. We want to go to the suburbs. Um, we are looking at, um, like the Highland Park area and Deerfield. I know a lot of people have been asking us for years. And then we're also considering moving downtown as well with our adult side of the business, which we're growing and we're rebranding re that as we speak. So also, you know, although dance is extremely fun and everything is about it is, you know, being, you know, being free spirited, but still you need systems and processes as you're oh. trying to build a business. <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about what are some of the systems processes, especially as you're trying to scale and multiply. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things you've learned and, and that you're implementing to, to make sure the business is growing, you know, even when you're not having yes. to oversee it? Right. Well, you know, the quality of our dance instruction is really, really important to my partner and I. Um, so we have definitely put in systems and structures for how you teach a class, how you greet a parent, um, down to how you dress when you're presenting yourself in front of parents and kids. Um, so we're, we're kind of creating a booklet to like, what does it mean to be an all about dance studio? Um, and we've done our first license agreement with an amazing woman. Her name is Kim and she opened her first studio in Bloomington, Illinois. So we packaged up our studio, you know, mantras and, and everything that we do down to our recitals, which we have a recital at the end of the year. Um, most studios call it a recital. We call it a dance inspiration because um, we're always trying to inspire people, whether that's through, you know, our dancing, through our stage presence, whatever it is, we want to inspire people to do what they love too. 
Um, it's all about having that passion when, you know, as you grow and even as an adult, like when you find that passion, that's what keeps you whole. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really our mission to keep those things going. And um, so the systems and processes, the front desk too also has a huge part of that. Um, we have a business manager that now runs all of that and she, you know, she gives people exactly what you do when you walk in the door, how you close things up at night. Um, and it's, it's training people because you can't just put it in a manual. Mm -hmm. So we really do a, a, a thorough job of training people hands on and, and we work with them so that they know exactly what they're doing. People, in, people do what you inspect, not what you expect, right? So exactly. You, so you have to really do a great job in checking up on them and making sure that they're following the instructions yeah, and as well. Yeah, and also leading by example too. I mean, um, and that's something that you really have to have checks and balances for because sometimes you get so, you know, you're coming in to teach a dance class, but you constantly have to lead by example. And our employees all do such a great job of that because they take pride in what they do. Mm -hmm. And they all have such respect for each other. The 15 years you've been in business, there's been a lot of changes happen, right? I mean, the Chicago as a whole has changed. You've mm -hmm. seen a lot of change in the technology. Yeah. How has technology and obviously the internet and all those things impacted the way you do business today? And what are some of the things that you're doing proactively to kind of stay current? Yes. Um, well, we are learning every day how to do that. And I'll tell you, when we first opened, we would have people register on paper, mm. you know, and now we have a, we use the mind body system um, so people can all register online. Uh, one thing that we're really focusing on is doing online classes because we have, you know, we have people all over the United States and beyond that would love to take a dance class in their home. And that's the way the world is going. I mean, kids these days do everything online. They learn how to play guitar. So why can't they learn to dance? Mm -hmm. um, so we're taking our adult side of the business and we're really focusing on, you know, where people go on vacation that are our clients that can, can do a dance class in their home to teaching dance instruction, to teaching stretch classes. Um, mm -hmm. So we're really focusing on using that part of technology to reach a broader, segment of people that want to dance. So someone who might be just starting a new business or trying to try, already started a business kind of in the in the mode of growth and things of like things of that nature, what are some of the wisdom that you might be able to share with them in terms of what they should be doing proactively? Oh goodness, learn everything you can about that one subject. Mm -hmm. Don't try to be too much to too many people. Um, I was funny, I was actually looking at a space up in the North Center today and the guy that was taking us around he's like why don't you guys do some yoga mm. and i'm like because that's not what we do you know and i think a lot of times business owners they'll be like oh gosh if we do this and we do this and then everybody will want to come and i think be really good at what you're doing and focus on that and always know who you are don't try to be somebody else to attract a type of customer because um, people want authenticity people want that genuine feeling so stick to who you are, know your core values. That's really important. And know that before you start training your employees because they, you want them to buy in as well and ask them questions that will pinpoint whether or not they follow those core values. Um, because your, your, your professional side of the business will become personal in a way in which you, you want to love those, those people that are working for you and you want them to love it and you want it to feel like a collaborative effort, not just you're working for a business. Because mm -hmm. um, especially the way that people are brought up today, they want to feel that they're a part of something bigger. And um, I, you know, I feel very fortunate that my, my company has turned into a village of people mm -hmm. that, you know, they all make the wheels spin. It's not just one person that's making the decisions right now. It's all of us as a collaborative effort. So back to your question, believe in who you are and be ready to work because mm -hmm. the, the last thing I think any business owner should ever do is start a business and then walk away and let other people run it. I think that you have to be involved as a business owner and it, it, it should mean something to you and you should want to be involved. You should love it that much that you go to work and you're like, this isn't work. You know, mm -hmm. even when I leave my kids, it's very important to me that they know I'm going to the studio. I'm not going to work and I'm going to do what I love because it's hard being a working mom. You know, mm -hmm. they'll look at you and they'll say, why do you have to go? And there's been times where I sit down with them and I say, you know, I go because I love it and I love you, but I also love what I do. So love what you do and also specialize in something. Specialize in something. Yeah, because yes. I, you know, the common common misconception people have, like you said, you know, oh, I can if I do this, I can tailor to this people and I can tailor to that people and I can be everything to everyone, but that's not what you really want, right? No. Because those doctors who specialize, like a brain surgeon is 
a specialist and it, it's hard to get an appointment with that person, right? Yep. But if, you, if you're if you just a generalist, they're every corner. You can get an appointment with any, any, any of those doctors any minute that you want to have an appointment with them, right. right? So essentially that specialization actually helps you demand the kind of price that you want to charge for the services that you offer as yes. well. Absolutely. And it makes you the expert in mm-hmm. the field. Um, there's a lot of people in the world. So if you try to be everything to everybody, you know, what is that doing? Um, figure out who you are and build that community around that because mm-hmm. you're going to like it more, you know, and then you're getting, you're attracting the customers that you actually want. You're not attracting every single person that's coming in there thinking you're one thing and then you're trying to make everybody happy, you know, yeah. because I do believe that you can make everybody happy. Everybody always tells me you can't make everybody happy. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I teeter on this because I believe that if you find the right customer that wants to be part of your community, they're for the most part going to be happy because you know what it takes to make them happy. Mm -hmm. And they also believe in you. So, you know, everybody's going to make mistakes and there can be bumps in the road, but you can ultimately create happiness out of your customers if you know exactly who you're going for. Most certainly. And I think part of that, you know, from a marketing standpoint is what we call like ideal customer profile. Mm -hmm. So I think when you start a business, you have to define what that ideal customer profile looks like. Totally. Or short form ICP. But essentially, if you understand the ideal customer profile, it not only helps you tailor your service offerings, Mm -hmm. but it helps you with how focused you are with your marketing efforts too. Yeah. Because when you're, if you're broader, you know, if your audience is so broad and you can't really pinpoint who the target buyer is, so your messaging isn't going to be on point. Your right. targeting is so broad. You're not getting the right people in the funnel. There's yeah. all sorts of stuff that comes along with that that kind Absolutely. of an approach as well. So yeah, yeah it's it, it's true in not just in running a business, but also from a marketing and promoting a business yeah. as well. Yes, totally. What other lessons have you learned that you would you'd love to share with us? Other lessons that I've learned, the, the things that pop into my head is I talked a little bit about personal versus professional. Mm-hmm. And um, it can become hard when, you know, especially me as a young business owner, when I first opened, it was all my friends that were working essentially for me. And I, I never wanted to be looked at as the boss. Mm-hmm. You know, people would be like, well, you're my boss. And I'm like, no, um, it's not like that. Um, but you do have to find that fine line and it takes Takes, it takes some time to, mm-hmm. to figure out that balance because you want to care for people as you would on a personal side, but you also have to maintain that professional relationship. And that takes some grooming, I think. So I would say, you know, be careful about the people that you let into your personal life, but also care for people that you would, you know, care for them in the same way that you would you think of a professional relationship like you have the separation Mm -hmm. I think you still need to nurture those people and and help them grow because you get some people that come into your your work environment that you know can be rock stars Mm -hmm. so you have to invest your time and energy into them in a way that you would a loved one Um, so you know you can tell that my business is very community driven (laughs) because I'm constantly thinking about that and I just think about um, the young people that are coming into the workforce now and I know that that's very important to them to feel a part of community. When you're running a business obviously there's sales, there's marketing, there's you know operations, there's the management of people, there's so many things that goes into running that. Yeah. Which of those things do you attract yourself most? What do I like to do? Yeah. Uh, You know I like to be on stage with a microphone Mm -hmm. and I also like to be dancing a lot so I would say that um, I, I'm attracted to the role of the Energizer Bunny. Mm-hmm. Um, it used to be a joke that I ate batteries for breakfast, but you know I'm there to really um, be people's cheerleaders a lot. I, I love the people that are part of All About Dance and I believe in them wholeheartedly. So I'm there as a support system. I'm there to pump them up to make them feel great. I'm also the idea person. Mm -hmm. I love coming up with ideas and that's why my partner is a great balance for me because she's a great executor. Mm -hmm. Um, She's great at coming up with systems and processes. So you might want to interview her Mm -hmm. on a whole nother level. (laughs) Um, And she's, she's a great balance for me. And so I would say I'm very attracted to more of like the FaceTime person. Yeah. I like to be there. I like to be meeting people. I like to be solving people's problems and making people feel good and happy. So I don't know if you read the book Traction. The I book haven't. talks about uh, you know the entrepreneur is the man of ideas, but then you need yeah. an integrator. It seems like your <laughs> yes. partner is the integrator in the equation. Yeah. So I think like that's usually the problem with the entrepreneurs, right? They're they're the visionaries, the big picture. They don't know how to execute it, but they just know, oh, I have to do this, and these are the great ways. You know, these are the ideas that I wanted to have seen implemented Absolutely. but they just don't know how to do it yeah. they always need that that's the right hand man that can actually make it happen they do and yeah. you know a lot of people ask me about my partnership and um opening by myself i think it was probably 
just in my DNA, I was going to do it. And I had no fear. Like, you know, I didn't have a dime in the bank and I went to the bank with a boombox and a dream. Mm -hmm. um, I did have a great business plan that my husband helped me write. And I had some parents that were very supportive behind me, but um, I, I took a risk because I had no fear. I knew that if I was going to set out to do something, I was going to work from morning till night to make it make it happen no matter what. But when I really did want the business to grow, Shannon became a very huge part of that. And Shannon is an idea person as well. And that's why I was attracted to her in the beginning because she came to me with things that could help the business grow. And she really proved that she would be able to make that grow with organization. So I think when she came on, many employees became very happy because it was no more like, you guys ready? Let's go do this. And they're like, okay, we are, you know, and I could get people excited, but then they're like, so how's this going to go? And I'm like, just run with it. Um, and Shannon was always there to, to keep the peace. And one other thing I should add, um, that's a really special thing about all about dance is Shannon, my partner started a dance camp and we do it in Haiti every single year and it's her initiative to really go beyond Chicago just like we said with technology we want to go online but we physically also want to touch children and adults all over the world with our method of love and, and passion through dance and so uh, once a year students teachers and our community has the chance to go down to Haiti and do a week-long dance camp where we bring dance into kids lives that would never ever be able to to do that and so it's really special and um, it's something that I admire Shannon for a lot and it's a oh, it's a whole nother layer to our business that you know you don't think oh my gosh we got to give back you know mm -hmm. and um, how do you do that and so it's a really awesome thing that she's brought to the the studio and I know that it's something that kids and parents are very proud of as well. Yeah, and I think sometimes it's a great way to engage employees as well is to give oh, back, totally. right? Because it's not just about for you and you know now. Yeah, and the whole business thing, you know. Yeah. yeah. So that's just another little nugget of amazingness that I'm so proud of. A lot of great wisdom. Certainly enjoyed the conversation and, and you. wish you all the best with your new venture that you're awesome. in. Awesome. Yeah. Thank Thanks you, again. Samuel. Yeah. This episode of Coffee with Closers is brought to you by One IMS, a leading digital marketing agency helping businesses win new customers. To request a free marketing ROI audit, please visit oneims.com. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. To make sure you never miss an episode, please subscribe.